Happy New Year. Welcome to yet another wonderful year when God, by a great and a mighty stroke, will change everything. The way things are The world has never what will happen and what will be coming to them, what they will see. And so it's with a great joy and happiness and gladness that I welcome you to this brand new year, 2023, uh, 5783 of the Hebraic calendar. I'm so excited. I just feel like taking this song. Ancient of days, as old as you are, as old as you are, you will never fail. Ancient of days, as old as you are, as old as you are, you have never failed. Now, let me take it the normal way. Ancient of days. As old as you are, as old as you are, you will never change. Ancient of days, as old as you are, as old as you are, you will never change. Baba, I cannot say thank you enough. I cannot give you glory enough. I have never known you to change. And I'm not expecting you to change this year either. And Lord, today, I bring the nation of priests all over the world, watchmen across the globe before your throne. And together we lay our crowns and our heads before you. And we bow down in holy obedience and worship and praise. You were wonderful last year. You set controls on our behalf. You ordered the governments of last year. You overthrew wickedness and brought glory to yourself. And Lord, by your strong hand, you have pierced through the Gregorian calendar, calendar of 2023 by bringing us into it with a strong hand. And Lord, imposing on it the Hebraic calendar, and the mystery of the Hebraic calendar. For this is a year when you will set your government and you will reign with your church. And you will bring in the harvest, Lord God Almighty, according to your power and your might. And no one will dictate to you what to do or tell you how to do it. Today, I worship you. I give you glory. I give you praise. Arise now and set your thrones in the nations. Let no one share this glory with you. As you reset things in the earth and you set new structures, arise, my Father, and show yourself great again as you have always done. Let the world fear before you, tremble before you. Let the world be reset 
Where there was darkness, let light come in. And let the Lord God be glorified. Thank you, Holy Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Welcome to the year when the Lord is going to do things differently. And I mean differently. This is not the year of the normal. I want to repeat. God has told me that this year he will do even miracles, not the way he used to do it. He will come from places and ways that people are not thinking of, expecting of. And the miracle, bam, will take place. And today, I connect you to that covenant. Your miracle will not come by the straight path or the normal patterns you were used to. When you are least expecting a miracle, it will come. It will happen. It's going to happen. It's happening already in the earth because I have heard of the Lord. Let me give you an example. Suddenly, return back to the scene with a bang. Nobody was expecting him back. Years ago, I prophesied when he was removed out of power or when he lost election. I said his work was not over. I called it an interregnum, an interlude, a break. And I said Netanyahu was coming back. <laughs> he is back. And he is back with a bang. It's like he is back with a vengeance. And from the very first week, things are already happening. You know, I was going through the papers, the Times of Israel, of Friday the 15th. Or is it Friday the 13th? Sorry. And I saw something that shook me in one of the headlines they called him the the democratic dictator or that he is back with what they call democratic dictatorship i call it democratic theocracy you know god does not negotiate with people democracy wants to get you know, the minds of all the people and get everybody to agree. God does not do that. Yeah, God is coming up, I mean, coming in with a government already. He's setting up his government to institute and establish his authority as the world has never known it. Prophecies will be falling down from heaven and fulfilling themselves. Let right, center, and forward. The Bible is going to come alive in many homes, many countries, and God will do things by a strong hand. He brought Israel out of Egypt by a strong hand. God is not negotiating this year. God is doing things in very uncanny ways, in ways that have never been known. I want to repeat. God is going to do things. I repeat, thus said the Lord. It is a thus said the Lord. I will do things differently this year. How many of you remember the book of Acts chapter 3? From verses 3 to 7. Peter going into the temple. Let me just read it. It says, well, let me start from verse 2. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask arms of them that entered into the temple. You see, when that man saw Peter, <laughs> 
He was expecting money, good money, because he saw a handsome, well-dressed, anointed man. You could recognize that this man was a man of means. He was expecting money, gold, the miracle of money. He got his legs in return instead of money. He found himself within one second jumping and leaping and praising the Lord. That was not the miracle he expected. It is not what you are expecting you are going to get. It is the next level of what you are expecting or what you thought was going to take time. You will ask for one thing. You will get the solution for that thing that will serve you for eternity. Today, I unlock the gate of your lives for unseeming miracles. And when I say unseeming miracles, miracles beyond your expectation. Not exactly what you are asking for, but not only satisfying what you are asking for, but setting you up for eternity, for great things, for good things, for mighty things, setting you up beyond your expectation. That is what God is up to. That's the pattern. That's the nature of this year. That is the visitation of the Messiah. The king is coming and is coming with a bang, rearranging things, setting up a choir that was not there to sing Hosanna in the highest, setting up governments that will not only recognize him, but even governments that will come against him to fulfill prophecy. He's going to just rearrange things the way they are never done. Let me tell you, even in Nigeria, the miracle this year, the miracle of the election is going to blow the minds of people because God is going to come in the way no one is expecting. This time around, I have heard of him. I'll be saying that in my other broadcast or follow up our other broadcast, either that of the National Altar, which we'll be having very soon next week, or this Watchman's platform, and you will hear things about Nigeria. But God, this time I have heard clearly, I know how he is going to visit Nigeria, and I know by his grace, what is going to happen from the wisdoms and divine revelations that he has given me. God has heard the cry of Nigeria. Somebody shout hallelujah. There is a visitation coming to your life that you never thought of. That is going to come in a different way. In that book of Acts, if you go to that verse 4, the Bible says... Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look unto us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. And I can tell you, expecting to receive money, gold, big thing. He was expecting bigger than usual coins that he had never seen before. Six, instead of that, he got the shock of his life. Silver and gold have I known, but such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. He got what silver and gold cannot buy. The complete restoration of his body, his bones, what would have taken doctors years of a thousand surgeries to put in place? By one stroke, God corrected all his heels. By one stroke, God will correct all the abnormalities in your life and all the abnormalities in your nation. By one stroke, one stroke, one stroke, one stroke. That is going to be the pattern of things in this year. Let me show you 
another sample or example of what I'm talking about. It, it's a great year. I'm excited. Look, it's going to be a year of adrenaline lean rush. It's going to keep you on your toes, excited, sometimes anxious, over anxious. You are expecting a miracle and you are afraid. What if the miracle does not take place? What will happen? It's going to be a beautiful year of beautiful anxieties, wonderful miracles. When God does last minute miracles that you never asked for. And brings sudden laughter and joy to your home, to your family, to your spirit, to your job. You know, to your job, your job, your job, your job. Something about jobs this year. Something about jobs this year that will make men's heart break dance. You know what <laughs> the youth call break dancing? It will your spirit will break dance, your soul will break dance. You 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 won't know how to shout the hallelujah because it will be a shock. It was not what you were expecting. What does the Bible say? In the book of Jeremiah, chapter 50. this verse 24 and I'm going to come back to verse 23 but let me read 24 and 25 I have laid a snare for thee and thou art also taken O Babylon <laughs> God is going to lay traps for Satan for our circumstances you know all this while it's been the devil setting ambushes and making us sigh. This year, God is going to set ambush for him. He's going to set ambushes for the wicked. They will be the ones that will be sighing and crying. It's a mystery. It says, I have laid a snare for thee, and thou art also taken, O Babylon, 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 Babylon the terror. And thou was not aware, you were not aware of that trap. Thou art found and also caught because thou had striven against the law. And that's how the miracle of Nigeria is going to take place. God is going to lay a snare for Babylon next month in, 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 in February against Babylon and it will fall into the trap it will take the bait that the Lord will put in its mouth and that bait will scatter everything and that bait Nigeria is going to eat is not what they are expecting but it is what will bring them deliverance <laughs> uh, I will say more in subsequent meetings you must keep tap with us when you hear me laugh like this, God is up to a mischief that even I cannot understand. It, even I cannot understand it. I repeat, even I cannot understand it. And when God does things like that, you are left in awe of him and you are you are left with your mouth open. You wonder why would he do it like this? Even you, it won't make sense. Nigerians are not expecting what is coming to them. But at the end, it will bring them sweetness and gladness. Because it will be the snare against Babylon. God's warfare is against Babylon. God's warfare is not against his church. It's not against men. It's not even against the wicked man. Against that old serpent called the devil. It has nothing to it has not even nothing to do with the wicked, with his captives. It has to do with the terrorism. The
the spirit of Babylon is the hammer. <laughs> Verse 23 says, How is the hammer of the whole earth cut asunder? Satan has been the hammer of the earth. But how is it cut asunder and broken? How is Babylon become a desolation among the nations? Many wicked people will become desolate at the end of this year. Things, consortiums of wickedness, institutions of wickedness will be left desolate, broken. They were the hammer. They were the ones that hammered us. They were the ones that hammered us. They hammered the church. They hammered the innocent. They hammered the poor. But I hear God say something is about to happen. They are going to be hammered. <laughs> Look, no, 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 no. They are not going to be hammered. The hammer itself is going to be cut into two. Can it? A hammer is supposed to be hard, difficult to cut through, not even by a saw. But God says he's going to cut into two. He's going to cut that hammer into two. That hammer that has been hammering your head, breaking your head, scattering your life, confusing you, disheveling you, disheveling you. Today, Rebo Santa, Rebo Santi, Yakulia, Hande Reba Hanta. I release the tornado of heaven against that hammer in your life. And I scatter the altars that have shut you down completely. And I release you. This year, the breaker is gone before us. He that breaks is gone before us. I loosen you and I break that power. Actually, as you are listening to me, something is letting go. Something is giving way. A healing, a miracle is taking place. I command right now, let your body be so miracle take place. If you are in the hospital listening to me, that leg, I don't know that it was a swelling on your knee that even the doctors cannot understand. Smite the spirit behind that infirmity and I saw that leg set free now. Receive that miracle in the name of Jesus. Yeah, that back, the neck, the spine, connected to the neck. I saw the Lord remove that which was on that spine and I see him breaking that yoke and setting you free. Receive your liberty. Your whole body is being repaired right now. I can see God cracking bones, bone to bone, marrow to marrow, and I see him bringing healing. Receive that healing in the name of Jesus Christ. Somehow I sense the shekaraba, bakuntaraba, masakanta. Somebody on your finger, I don't know that it's your finger around the nails, where your nails are on your finger, where your nails are. God is removing an infirmity there and God is setting you free in that hand. And after today, you will feel it again. You are healed in the name of Jesus. God is correcting yokes that were placed on people. God is breaking those yokes right now. Ah, Baba said, why are you worried? You think your, your end has come. The Lord says I should. This month will be the beginning of months for you. Instead of the end, it will be a beginning. God is going to open a gate and within three months, you will be so restored that you will forget the afflictions of last year. You will know that the Lord is God. One is going to set you in a new place where you will find honor and exalt you in that place. And people who booed at you, yea, people who laughed at you, people who had turned their back and declared that you have been, you are forgotten, you, you, you Yours is over. They will come back celebrating you and apologizing. And they will not know what to do with you again. Rabosika Ribahanta. I loosen you from every trouble, every travail you have found yourself in. I break the yoke. I release the finger of God and I break the yoke in Jesus' name. Like that man that Peter visited, 
Let your miracle take place now. In Jesus' name. I can sense a very serious anointing here that is breaking yokes specifically, taking away burdens and repairing and sending messengers of hope. I can see the Spirit of the Lord doing a new thing. Let me tell you, Natayahu has come to finish what he, he began, the part two of the work. If you remember very well, I told you that Iowa's destiny is attached to that of Putin, of Russia. They are both gathering armies, building new states for the future, for what is to come. Their destinies are connected to the future, preparing the now for the future, creating the future in the now. I repeat, preparing the now for the future and then creating the future in the now. I hear Natayaku wants to go into technology. That is the future. That is the future being created in the now. In the now. In the now. He is going to ruffle a loss so that the Messiah can come. Is he not from the house of Judah? Have you not heard of the house of Judah? Have you not heard of the prophecies of the Messiah in the house of Judah? And you think that Tayahu is an ordinary man? He is a messenger of the Messiah. Ye Rabuka Leke to Rema Manta. Have you not heard of the house of Jesse? Pokoye Kapi Hanta. He is a messenger of the, he is a foreigner of the Messiah and of Messianic prophecies will be fulfilled by him. Rakunta, prophecies that had to do has to do with the end of time. End of time. End of time will be fulfilled by him and through his hands. He will set Israel on a straight path to do God's will as never before. And no ruler will be able to undo that which he does in this season. Is the hand of the Lord not with him? My Father, in the name of Jesus, let the glory of Israel be restored again. Let the power and the institutions that you had established in your temples be reset again in Israel. God bless Israel. You will forgive me in this broadcast. I speak as a prophet and you will forgive me if I sound like a madman. Take me whichever way you see me because I can see the season of the Lord coming on the earth and the Lord is cutting off the hammer. He's breaking the hammer. He that is called the hammer is being broken. That which is known as the hammer in your life is being scattered. The hammer of Satan is being broken. So today, anything that has become a hammer, hammering you, I rebuke it in your life. I command it to leave you alone and I release a doorway of escape and I release you into that doorway of escape into a new field. God will create a garden instead of a body for your life now. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. That is what I hear the Lord doing. Look at verse 25. Of Jeremiah 50, he says, The Lord had opened his armory <laughs> and had brought forth the weapons of his indignation. For this is the work of the Lord God of hosts in the land of the Chaldeans. Hey, for the Lord had opened his armory. Whatever you need to set you free. Let it come to you now. I unlock the armory of God to begin to release the solutions you have asked for to your life. Receive them in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Somebody, God is growing you a new skin. I don't know what happened to your old skin, but you don't need it anymore. It, it, it had brought you disgrace. Putting a new skin in, 
in your body, on your body. Receive the miracle now. There is a new growth taking place and it's a new flesh. It's a new spirit. It's a new glory. Receive it. Wear it. Enjoy your liberty. Those pains you were feeling in your skin, sometimes your skin is burning. I said, the Lord, take away that fire from your skin. You will no longer feel the burning of the skin anymore. In the name of Jesus, you wouldn't need all those balms you use, every, anything, whatever medications you have been using for that burning skin. I see the Lord take it away. Receive your miracle and receive your new body, your new skin, your new skin, your new skin. For it is a day when God is putting new garments upon the righteous. So wear your own new skin with pride because it harries with it a physical and a spiritual symbolism. God is doing a new thing. God is casting new garments upon the world stage. Ah, that is why God brought the, 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 the is it the Hindu now? Into the life of Britain as its, as, as its president. God is trying to break the yoke of Babylon. He's trying to expose, bring Babylon up so that the ways of the Messiah might be revealed. You will not understand the ways of the Lord now, for he is yet unfolding himself, unfolding himself. He is doing the same thing in the U.S. The U.S. is about to go through a change of skin, change of skin, a change of skin. I already interpreted to you the war between Russia and the Ukraine. And I told you all the secret plants God is smuggling in, you know, seeds he's sowing to redeem the future through that war. If you have not been following this broadcast, begin to follow it. Because this year, even when I am not directly broadcasting, the programs I will ask them to put for you to watch will be relevant to what God is doing in the now. So you must stick to this, to this channel every time throughout this year. Warriors, intercessors, watchmen, can you just hold your hands wherever you are? Can you invite the Holy Spirit to begin to cut in sunder the hammer of Babylon? in your country, in your nation. My father, break the hammer. Destroy the hammer of Babylon. Destroy the hammer of Babylon in Nigeria. Destroy his altars. In every election, destroy the hammer of Babylon in Africa. Destroy the, bam, uh, the hammer of Babylon in Asia. Destroy the hammer of Babylon in Europe. Destroy the hammer of Babylon in North America, South America, the Antarctica. Destroy the hammer of Babylon in the nations of the earth. In the name of Jesus Christ, my Father, arise. Open up your armory. Lord, whatever is needed in my nation, release it from your armory to straighten out my nation for me. In the name of Jesus that should be the prayer now from that Jeremiah chapter 50. That should be the prayer. God is shooting out arrows from his armor. The Lord had opened his armory and had brought forth the weapons of his indignation. Father, I unleash by the Spirit these weapons on the indignation to lay hold on the institutions of Satan darkness to lay hold on every fallen demon and lord cut them off, off off from their habitations from where they have cast veils over nations where they have cast veils in my own life in my father's house let the armory of god answer them the appropriate weapon go to war on my behalf the appropriate angel go to war on my behalf 
the appropriate instrument in the hand of the Lord. Go to war on my behalf in the name of Jesus Christ. That's the kind of year we're entering into. Welcome to 2023. If you understand the intensity of what I've just done, then you understand what 2023 will be like. Because God is going to now, look what I saw. And I said it during the crossover. If you have not watched our crossover meeting, go and watch it on the, in the YouTube. I said it in the crossover that God is setting a government over the lives of people and nations to reset things, reset things, restore things, repair things. But when I rise to move, a government of heaven walks with me to bring order to set things back in place. Nigerians, don't be afraid of what is to come, of the up uproar. Salvation is coming, except that it's not as you are expecting it. God is going to hide his salvation in intrigues. You know, he's going to wrap it. You will see the first hit. Then from the first that has hit, a second will come out. <laughs> It is that second that will come out. I'll be explaining that during the, 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 the national altar next week. Because God has suddenly come to make all things plain. And now what God is up to in our great country, Nigeria. And by that we understand what God is up to in Africa. By that also we understand what God is up to in the nations of the earth. In North America, in England, in England, mm, mm, I mentioned England. Have you not heard of the Prince Harry controversy that is going on now? God's hammer, God's hammer, God's hammer, God's armory, God cutting up the hammer of Babylon and resetting things. Yea, I will not explain it more than that. But the Prince Harry thing coming up in the earlier part of the year, Prince Harry's revelations, they are not ordinary. It's part of God's complete grand design against Babylon. Against Babylon. To reorder things. To set a new pattern. Set new laws. To make all things pass away and to make all things become new. To bet new institutions, to reform the monarchy and give them a different role and give them a less visible role and reduce their relevance as the Messiah moves on. Because something is about to take place and that thing there is no man that is in control except the Almighty. Today, I told you last year that this year God is coming to make us reign with. That means carve governments out for us. Set up thrones that we will sit on. But we will reign with him. Everything we do is to create space for him to fulfill prophecy. Anything he makes us become is to create space for him to find expression and bring glory to his name. I will not want to do this. I will not want to over labor this. Daniel chapter 7 verse 22. Let me start concluding with the book of Daniel chapter 7 verse 22. What does the Bible say? In the Holman version, <coughs> the Bible says, until the ancient of days arrived, God is arriving in the earth now. He said, where has he been? He's always been there. But now he's making himself known, more known than ever before. And the judgment was given in favor of the holy ones of the Most High. This year is going to bring give judgment in favor of the holy ones of the Most High. Now, not the last sentence.
There's the remaining part of that verse. For the time had come, and the Holy Ones took possession of the kingdom. That means this is a year when the church begins to take possession of the kingdom and take possessions of the institutions of this world. This is a year when the church begins to get restored. Everybody who has walked by the flesh will find himself empty in this season. His prophecies will be empty. The prophecies will come to pass. They will be forced to either reform or become irrelevant or be replaced. Three things. Reform or become irrelevant or be replaced. Three things will affect the church. Reform or become irrelevant or be replaced. I want to repeat a third time. Three things will affect the church, will come after the church this year. Reformation or irrelevance. Or what? Replacement. Replacement. Choose which one you want of the three. <laughs> Whatever you choose is what comes after you. But those are the three spirits I see walk in the church this year. Reformation, irrelevance, or replacement, complete replacement. Jesus said that the Father is able to make these stones replace us. This year, strange things, is, you're going to be the strangest here, the most interesting, the most, the most exciting for those of us who are spiritual. Exciting because we will find ourselves one second anxious, the other second laughing because of the sudden victory that has come. Then the next second being elevated. I mean, it's just going to be a labyrinth of beautiful things. You know, a labyrinth of God unnerving the earth. Note the word unnerving. Let me stop my gibberings and allow the Holy Spirit do uh, what he wants to do in this season. Of course, we know what verse 26 says of that same and it says, but the court of heaven will convey and his dominion, the dominion of Satan will be taken away to be completely destroyed forever. And then God's dominion will begin to rise. So the beginning of that warfare, it's not taking place in one year. I had told you, that the first seven years of this particular decade is meant to set the dominions of God and build a vineyard for the church. So that the last three years will be the glory of God, just speaking. If you miss it in these first seven years, you may never get it right in a lifetime again. And God said, particularly the first three years are meant to restore back our foundations and rebuild, restore back our gardens for us. And we have entered the third year. Don't miss your season of restoration. Don't forget. You either allow God to reform you, or God will make you irrelevant, or God will make you replaceable. He will replace you. Choose which of the three you want. And that's the blessing of the Lord for this week. Watchmen, it's time to take our places and release the armory of God to begin to cut Babylon to size. And until this time next week, I want to say remain blessed. And I want to say, take this word of the Lord and go to war and cut Babylon to size. Cut Babylon to size. I want to repeat verse 24 of Jeremiah chapter 50. I have laid a snare for thee, and thou art also taken, O Babylon. 
This year is the year of the Lord's ambushment against Babylon and all those that do wickedness, that do things related to Babylon, compromise. He has laid a snare and they are taking on aware. They are not expecting it. They are still confident. Even up to now as I'm talking, they are still very confident. They are not aware of what is about to overthrow them or overtake them, or cut them into two, or make them irrelevant. He says, thou art found, and also caught. Emphasis, found. Thou art found, you have been discovered, and also caught. <laughs> because thou hast striven against the Lord our God. Shalom. I release the spirit of this world to follow you and your nation everywhere you enter. None will escape these words of the Lord this year. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Rebuilding and resetting the thrones of God in your life. And please don't forget. I repeat, don't forget to go back and set up your priorities with God and make an offering for those priorities and enter the year with a new covenant with the Lord, the covenant of covering and protection. And don't forget, like I told you last year, make a covenant for every one of your children that the Lord will cover them this year. I'm about to pass a decree to all members of Throne Room Ministries, the Watchman Ministry that I lead, and set a new pattern and a new way of covenant and life for all of us. If you want to join us, be part of that covenant. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. And listen carefully. If you have not given your life to Jesus, it's time to find your way back to the Lord for it is only those that the Lord hides in this season that will escape and the Bible says there is no salvation in any other there is no other name whereby man can be saved except through the name of Jesus today I invite you to ask Jesus to cover you I invite you to hand over your soul for safekeeping to him I invite you to stop leaning on your own understanding and leaning by your strength or walking with your strength. For it's not by power nor by might, said the word of the Lord, but by my spirit, said the Lord. Can you ask God today to exchange your weakness for his strength? I want to invite you to give your life to Jesus and to invite him to become the ruler and the savior of your soul. If you want to hand over to him, can you just bow your head, put your hand, your, 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 your left hand upon your chest and just stretch out your right hand the way I'm holding mine and say with me, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Destroy the darkness in my life and replace it with your light. I invite the life of Jesus to take over my life from me and to rule over my life for me. Come into my heart and make me a new creature. Let all the old things in my life be passed away. Lord, let me, myself, become the new thing created in Christ Jesus, created by Christ Jesus, created from Christ Jesus. I ask to be forgiven for every sin I have committed. I receive forgiveness from the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Jesus, I ask that your broken flesh bring me redemption. Your dead at Calvary bring me redemption today. Thank you for hearing me. Now come into my heart and rule as my Lord and my Savior. Today, Satan of my life and I renounce him out of my life. And I hand over my life to you forever and ever to live inside of me and walk with me and live with me forever. Thank you for hearing my cry. Thank you for receiving me. Thank you for making me a new creature. Wash my sins in the blood now and set me free from every condemnation. Now, my Father, send the Holy Spirit to instruct me in your ways and to guide me and to help me live a holy life and to help me make heaven and to help me overcome everything that is thrown at me from now and henceforth. I receive him inside of me. In Jesus' name. Amen. This broadcast cannot be over without me thanking those of you who have begun to hold the hand of God and the word of the Lord that is coming to you through your online giving and offering. This year will be a great year for all of you. I want to particularly thank Ola Tokumbo who has sacrificially given and made some prayer request. Today I release the hand of God to fulfill your destiny. This year will not bring you affliction. This year will not bring your loved ones affliction. I release a hand of God to separate the mysteries of darkness and the manipulations of circumstances around your life and to set you in your own new place with great joy and great victories and great visitations following you. Receive your blessing on your seed in Jesus' name. Now to pray for all others who are sending online their giftings to help us build the 16,000 sitting auditorium and to help us complete the 16-story tower of prayer that we are completing right now. The Lord God open a new heavens over your lives and over your businesses and make you prosper in every way and in everything. The Lord rebuke the devourer at the sight of you. Let all, all, all that fight you fall before you. In Jesus' name. Receive the divine blessing of the Lord and the hand of the Lord keep you from now and throughout this year. In Jesus' name, amen.